Hi, everyone. I'm Pip from Seymour Digital Media. You're listening to Know How Marketing Lab podcast. This podcast brings together different experts in marketing from our Facebook group, Cyberpunk Geeks Marketing Mixer. Each week we get on here and we talk about something search marketing like Google ads or SEO, social media marketing from Facebook to TikTok or website marketing. If you're a marketer or aspiring marketer, a business owner or entrepreneur, this podcast for you. We're going to share the best SEO, search, social, uh, and website strategies. We share tips and hacks, Google ad strategies, what's going on in the current market. Each week we discuss something exciting and awesome in marketing. It's that time of the week. It's that time for Geek Speak. And today we are talking about the process and the workflows for getting your website from idea to launch. And my name is Phelan. I work at Seymour Digital Media. We're focused on search engine marketing. And my name is Rena Little from LittleWorks ND Media. And we have a small digital marketing company that focuses on websites, among other things. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> We wanted to hop on because uh, it's definitely one, it, you know, everyone kind of needs a website. And so we know that there's, you know, at the best of times, it could be a bit of a pain to get one built. So we just kind of wanted to talk through, you know, the, uh, the way you go from basically just having saying to someone or even wanting to build your own, what are the steps that I need to do to get this built? And especially when you're working with an agency where they're going to take your idea and uh, building a website and make it actually happen. Yes. And that is actually step number one, is understanding the expectations at the beginning. And usually an agency will help you through that. But the one thing that I always find amusing is that we're always working on multiple projects at once. There's never just one website. If we've sent you an estimate, and I know I'm not alone in this, we've sent out 20 estimates. (laughs) And so when you want to move on something... You need to get that deposit down because, or the first payment down, because that's what's going to get your project scheduled. So it's not something like I have had the last few clients think that when they they wait until they're ready for the project themselves, and then they give me the money and want me to start immediately. And in their mind, that's sort of the process, but really that's not realistic. Um, Most good agencies are uh, scheduling things throughout the year. And they might even make you wait a couple of months to get started. And then also the expectations of when things should be completed are always a little bit off. Sometimes I've gotten my timelines down really nicely and really worked on that last year, tracking everything and and getting my systems organized better. So it's not going to be three to four a week job. Unless someone's doing a rush job for you, you, you can. Get a site, especially a new site organized in that time frame, if the client is able to provide the content immediately. But the design and development process can definitely happen in that time. There is the time that it takes to do something. And then there is the duration of the days that you can schedule that do something over. So for example, it does absolutely take, you know, we usually take about four hours to do a homepage development with two ways. But it's going to take a week and a half, usually, to get the client feedback and change requests and things like that before we can establish the homepage. It's not that it just takes a couple of hours. It's that we need feedback from the client and we need that constant back and forth between the client. So we check in with them. We do the, and we should start with the first part. So we've got the deposit. We've scheduled the project the start project. It usually starts with a kickoff session or someone might call it a discovery session or call it something else, but really you want to be sitting down with your provider and giving them all of the information at the upside so that there's not a lot of change requests even needed as you go through. So the things that I like to do, my kickoff sessions are about an hour. Sometimes I can get it done in 30 minutes. depends on how communicative a client is and if they've already done the thought behind it yeah. and generally we'll give them a few questions we'll say book a kickoff session here are the things that we're going to talk about so that you can think about them in advance and get us some pre-work so that we can take a look so we like to know if you have a site we need to know that and usually we can find that but sometimes i've been surprised 
Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. yeah so sometimes businesses change their names and you don't know that to look for it. We're going to find out what do you have on your site? What do you want to keep on your site? What do you, What is missing from your site? Have you added new services or products that are not on your site? I was going to say also yeah. one of the very top ones is what is the purpose of the website? Are you like, is yes. it e-commerce or is it lead generation? Is it both? Yes. So that's yes. going to be another big one as well, because that's going to dictate how the rest of the workflow is going to go. Of just... Yes, that's exactly right. Usually we'll know that after, because I usually get that information and I should have mentioned that in the discovery call before I do the estimate. And I know that a lot of agencies don't do anything until you've put money on the table, but we like to have a little discovery session to figure out what it is that your needs are. Do you need a new logo? Do you have a logo at all? <laughs> are you yeah. happy with your current branding? All that stuff. So we sit down and for a few minutes and before we do the estimate so I can organize the estimate to around those costs for those requirements. And then I need to know like what, how do you want your, your clients to contact you? What, what should first contact look like? Do you want them to schedule a discovery call? Do you want a buy now button? Are they just going straight to buying? Are they entering information so that you can get them an estimate? Do you want them to call? Like I have some particularly the sales guys. I have one guy in particular that I'm thinking about a client and he's selling stuff. He's selling um, promotional things. And so for mm -hmm. him, he loves getting people on a call because that's his favorite space. He can really get to know what you need. He can make suggestions that maybe you don't think you need. He can guide you in, in a better way with all of the qualifying questions that salespeople tend to ask. So it's just yeah. easier for him to get on a call. So yeah. there's that. So we need to figure that out. Then we're also going to ask about colors and, you know, that sort of stuff. Is there anything they absolutely hate? That's another point that I'd like to bring up. It's not like painting your living room. You're not going to be living in your website. Um, while it should represent your brand, and definitely there are feelings that we should have towards a brand. We should like our brand. But we also want to make sure that it's relevant, it's contemporary, it speaks to our clients, it speaks to our ideal clients and the clients that we want to attract. So we use a lot of psychology, color palette selection and font selection. So it's less about, should be less about, oh, my staff and I, we don't like this because like is a subjective thing. If you can figure out, give me a reason why you think it doesn't work, that's great. If you want something that's slightly different, that's also fine. But I, I always give a little bit of pushback when I get responses like that because we, we want to appeal to your ideal client. And sometimes that's just not you. Like you're going to have different taste than that. Uh, it should also yeah. go with your current logo, right? We're not going to build anything that's going to be weird with your current logo. So what that means is that it has to have a color theory based relationship with the colors that you already have. So either it's analogous or it can be complementary, or it could be something else. There are a whole bunch of different terms and how colors relate to each other on the color wheel. And we're going to use the, those relationships mostly not straight up because yeah. that's also a little bit boring, but we, we do have rules that we're following and that probably most clients don't know about. So that's, that's something to keep track of. So we're going to go through, the, I'm going back to discovery session because I see I'm getting further ahead. Okay. The discovery no, no, no. session should have all of that stuff, all of that stuff. Functionality, I'm going to ask about functionality. Do you want to have a store? I should know that already, but I probably will ask. But you might want to have a portfolio. I might suggest a portfolio. It might not be something that came up in, in the uh, discovery session, but in the kickoff session it's going to be important for me to know. So I might have looked at your material more closely. I might suggest that, especially for people that don't think about that. Like I did one for somebody who just recently who does um, plumbing and it's not a uh, portfolio is not the first thing that comes to mind with plumbers, but everybody digs a good before and after picture. Am I right? Yeah, Can yeah. I get an amen in the comments? <laughs> yeah, right? uh, I would say that for so, like pretty much any sort of home service, right? Countertops, yeah, exactly. uh, you know, anything where you can show like this is how dated and, you know, boring it was before. And I mean, we do it yes. all the time with everyone that we work with that does the same stuff yes. where it's like, get us some content because people love that stuff where it's like they can actually visualize like, hey, yeah. they had this rundown kitchen and then it became it looked like this after they were done. Yeah. It, it yeah. makes it easy for other people. People love that. People love that. They just love yeah. that. That's some of the best social content to be had. Then once you have the discovery session, then I go away and I ask for maybe a few more details. And we go through page by page your website. Is this still relevant? Is this still relevant? Who's missing? What's missing? All yeah. of that stuff. 
And then we decide on how we're going to use. Usually there's a little package of copywriting within my websites, and I'll usually use that to focus on the main pages, which would be the home page and the services page, because those ones are pretty important uh, pages. Yeah. And the about, maybe the about page too. Yeah, That's what we'll do. And then after the discovery, then we go back and the designer gets going with the uh, homepage design. Well, I get going with the content organization and the content rewriting and all that stuff. And then we come back with two design ways for a homepage. And we don't do, I know a lot of agencies, especially bigger ones, they might do like what's called wireframe, where they sort of just block out with blocks where the things are going to go. I don't really do that until I have a good understanding of the content. I like to get the look of the homepage first. I know the things that I want to have on a homepage. They're fairly standard. They're going to be things like your call to action above the fold line. It's going to be a yeah. good, clear you know, tagline or, or little piece of text to get people's attention that's going to really hit home what it is that you do in a snapshot. And then a little bit lower, it's going to be a little bit more about what you do or why somebody wants to work with you or what the benefit is for that client to work with you. And then it's going to sort of go more in detail to of the services. So we might have like a, just a little couple of blurbs that go to different pages. Hopefully they're different pages because that's better for SEO. I'm just giving Pip a plug. Pip would say yeah. that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Site Am I right, and Pip? <laughs> yeah. Each service needs its own page. I can hear Pip yelling in the background. Yeah. Of my head. <laughs> <'Cause she's... laughs> okay, so we are going to organize the content first, and then I like to frame it out because really the <laughs> who's on manning me? That must be Pip. It says Facebook uh, user. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, that, yes, that um, is Pip. <laughs> Yeah, so I do listen, right? So basically the point is is that we want to make sure that the information gets out in a very particular way. It's got to be client-driven, user-driven. So it's not going to be, we are here, this is what we do. It's going to be, you are here because you want this and you need this. And it's going to be more about a benefit and how we're going to stomp on that pain point that you have and fix that for you and do it well and all that maybe stomp is not the best yeah yeah well but it's the it's word, the it's agitate right there. Yeah, yeah it's like problem agitate solution right the classic yeah. copywriting yeah. and so yeah that and i mean that's what it is like it, it does yeah. agitate is the the one that they go with there right agitate i i don't use that word but i'm going to put that in my back pocket because that's great yeah so once we do that once we organize the content then it becomes really evident where everything needs to go because we actually look at the flow and this is where i'm always talking i seem to be the only one who does this i visualize a website as not a two-dimensional page and a bunch of two-dimensional pages i think of it as a sculpture or an experience where i'm diving through it and I might go down this page for a little bit, but then I'm going to leap in here and get to the spot that I want. And if I didn't dive in at this spot, like the call now or book now, I'm going to yeah. dive. I'm probably going to need to dive a little bit further down and get a little bit more information and then dip into something else and then make that call to action. So I might, depending on where I am in my in my buyer's journey. I might want that call right away. Oh yeah, this person connects with what I'm looking for and the brand is speaking to me and I want to work with them. That might yeah. be like an instant thing. But more likely than not, if you're running any kind of ads, traffic ads, then you're probably going to want to capture people at the sign up for my newsletter phase or the join us on the Facebook yeah. phase, which is more warming up your audience. So you need to have yeah. spaces for those places and you don't want them all at the same spot. So typically yeah. somebody who needs more information to be warmed up is going to go further down and through the pages a little bit more than somebody who's ready to buy who's actually going to dip out of the homepage quickly and go straight to the services page generally and really read that thoroughly to make sure that they understand and then book now or buy now or whatever it is that they do. So that's yeah. sort of how the two, I mean, I know that there are lots of different stages of the buyers, but I usually focus on the two the the cold to warm and the warm to buy and when i'm starting with especially new websites or smaller businesses or things like that because those are the two things that we need to keep on and then the more budget marketing budget that you have then you can concern yourself with more phases of that buyer's journey yeah it's generally the middle is going to be built out with content over time that'll come up yeah. as questions come from That's the client right. but yeah from initially starting it's just like like you said it's just getting 
what's their initial impression of the website and then also it's like if they're coming back they've made some decisions how are they actually going to close the deal get a hold of you etc yeah so then we come back with the two homepage design ways and sometimes they're more similar than not and sometimes they're very different it really just depends on how we understood the design and you know how excited the designer is to do different kinds of things or and then we ask for feedback at that time so we're like did we get all the stuff that you were expecting on the homepage is the call to action correct? Do you agree that all of these pieces need to be here in this order? Is there something that has bigger priority? I'll ask about that. But generally, I've never, we do that for the client because the client's not really thinking them the same ways about user experience as, as designers are. And usually what happens is the client will say, oh, we really like this this page but we like this image or the way that you did this hero image here better so then we can just plop it on it works it works usually fairly yeah. well you we could just say oh yeah we'll we'll do this part this part and that part and then the designer will go back and adjust the design accordingly there may be some extra changes in terms of where the buttons are or where where the navigation is if we're making you know, if we're going to change a, a hero image, sometimes that changes where the navigation goes and such. Once we get that finalized, then we pretty much have enough design information from the homepage to be able to build out the rest of the site quite easily. So basically the first design, usually I tell my clients we're going to take between about two, two to three weeks. And then I try and get it under two weeks if I can. That's what usually what I do. And then I give them about a week for feedback you don't want to leave it with the client for too long and i always include a weekend in that so that you know small business owners have a chance to really sort of take a look where there's with fresh eyes when they're away from their business and that's the point like when you're actually doing the home page review you're gonna want to really get a lot of feedback that's where a lot of feedback is more more valuable because if you wait until the rest of the site is done and then you give back that valuable picky feedback be picky up front not at the end because it's a lot harder to change at the end so if there are people and in my instructions my little email i always say this is where you bring in your stakeholders have you got a friend that you want their opinion on it have you got a partner have you got a, a staff member who might you know, want to give their two cents, like the two cents should not come when the development has happened. Like we don't want the two, we don't want yeah, that yeah. kind of two cents at that point. So we want to have all of the design changes, everything really well organized and understood because it means that we've really understood your business by the time you're approving designs in the PDF format. And then once we've got the okay for the home page, then we build out, as I said, the, the rest of the site, and then what we do is we get that sign off on that and then we go to development and that usually takes about two weeks in our process yeah. it takes about two weeks and then we have a draft that's not live and we'll show that draft and that's where we want really good eyes really close eyes oh we i thought that this photo was going to be different that kind of eyes oh there's a typo here we're looking for that kind of really close review and generally we do we can catch most of the typos and stuff like that at that point <laughs> hopefully there aren't that many want to know more about seo we've got a class for that our mission is to educate students about the right tools techniques and strategies to grow their businesses using the most up-to-date search engine marketing optimization techniques and tools find out more at knowhowmarketinglab.com Sometimes a name will, will escape us and that kind of thing, or a date will escape us. And sometimes the photos, we've had some photos that have been still placeholders just because it's been a, a glitch in our system where the project manager has not delivered the approved photos to developer in time before the developer threw up the placeholder. And it's not yeah. a problem that can be swapped out super easily. That's the beauty of WordPress and a lot of the other websites at this point now too. Um, uh, oh, I was going to say there's a pro tip yeah. for that as well that I've done. Uh, if you do the paid tier of Screaming Frog, it does spell checks and grammar checks across the website for you. Oh, and it pulls that in and it's one of the tabs. Is, yeah, yeah. yeah so it, and it's only at like it's 100. need to do that. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. It's for any person really building the know. website and you just yeah. scan the whole thing, find all the spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes. Yeah. It's pretty quick to do that as well. So yeah, just a pro. 
and it's like it's 150 pounds british pounds uh, a year for it so it's like it's oh, a that's pretty, pretty cheap good. Oh, that's yeah, a, for that. a license that's pretty good that's, yeah i've never so, i haven't used that before but that's good i just used the free one yeah that, that's one of the paid part has like a couple extra bonuses and that's one of them and it's just yeah, like oh that's right. actually pretty good for a bonus when you're doing like a website scan and just helping the client with mistakes and then the next step after development we show the draft we get feedback on the draft and that should really take just a couple of days usually that's it and, um, oh, before I send it to the client, I have the de designer check to make sure that the integrity of the design has not shifted because sometimes you don't always get exactly what you want in WordPress. Sometimes there's no point in doing custom coding just so you can have a few extra pixels over. Yeah. So it's clo It's very close. It's very close, but, um, and, and not even different enough that the clients actually really register the difference. Um, yeah. So that I works. would just and also say... I would just say to that, sorry, it was just that there are also people have to remember that there's like 30 different screen sizes out there yeah. in general. Yeah, so that's like right. everything that's right. has to like make adjustments. And so it's it's never going to be that's perfectly right. consistent. And like I'm on a bigger size computer and the client might look at it on their laptop and it might look entirely different. And that's just something you have to look at with the client about yes. and making sure that yes. you know what they're looking at it on. Yes. So that's sort of the next step. So once we get the designer loving the, the main site, on the we, we use the 15 inch screen as our base and then we go out from there. And yeah. so what happens is I'm, I actually work on a 13 inch screen. So I usually see any problems right away because it's really funny. Almost all menus drop down for me. So like a lot of menus drop down and yeah. I don't like that. But so we'll check it on iPad. We'll check it on some major phones and we'll check it. So usually we do, we try and do two stylings, one for com desktop computers, laptops, and one for mobile devices. Sometimes we need yeah. to do a third one in there because it's just uh, doesn't work very well, but generally we can get away with two, which, which is nice. Yeah. And oh, it makes sense. Yeah. And then once you have that sign off, then we migrate there are either two things, either it's a brand new site and your hosting is ready and we just take away the splash page or the construction page, whatever yeah. you think of that as. Yeah, maintenance, um, splash, yeah, whatever. Maintenance yeah, maintenance page, yeah. whatever you call it. If it's replacing another site, there is there is a lot more technical detail. That This is why your second site is always going to cost you more than your first site ever did because you have to do things like all the technical stuff. So we are going to do the on-page SEO. We're going to check if you've had a site, we're going to check a site, check the site and make sure that that's really what we want to be ranking for and make sure that's been done before. Uh, we'll make adjustments at that point. If it's a brand new site, we'll definitely put some on-page SEO on all of your pages there for you then but we also have to do 301 redirects we migrate the site over to your hosting that's what we do so we actually it works like this you have a domain and you have a site you need to move your site files to the um, new hosting or the current hosting whichever it is if you're going with our new hosting uh, it could yeah. be a new space it could be your space and then the if the domain was already pointed there it should just be fine and if it's not then we need to point uh if it's if your domain was pointed somewhere else and we're giving you new hosting then you need to point the domain over to that hosting to make it live and that's kind of the end of it you there may be a domain transfer that needs to happen depending on your hosting and what your situation is sometimes that can take five days afterwards to do um, yeah. And that's usually pretty much it. And, you know, I've skipped out any kind of process that has to do with email because that can be complicated and quite different and quite boring. So I'm not going to discuss that today. <laughs> but yeah. um, the gist is, is we will check your email, make sure we know where it's hosted, make sure that we've got a solution for you. Either we're going to change that out to a new hosting. If you're on cPanel hosting, especially, we usually change people out because cPanel hosting is... Um, is um, not desirable, um, less and less every year. And yeah. uh, we'll get you on a different kind of service. And then we'll ask again for a final sign off because in the migration process, sometimes something can get, get thrown off a little bit there. It's been a long time since I've seen that happen, but in the olden days, like even three or four or five years ago, there would quite often be something that's thrown off. Yeah, I I just looked at a website that it was a brand new website and their search console said they had ten thousand 
four or fours because they touch oh, into no. it off of redirect. So Oh uh, no. Yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> no, we definitely we don't want that. That's that. bad. That's what the that's what the the yeah, the redirects are when we do uh from an old site to a new site. That's why that's so important because you don't want 404s because you'll tank your SEO. So if you've had a site up online for like, I don't know, five or 10 years, you've ch- chances are even with doing nothing, you've you've done something with SEO because SEO kind of works on its own in a way. Yeah. So you probably have your pages ranking in some form or another. And you've got indexed those little SERPs, those little, when you do a search on Google, those, those line items are called SERPs and they're there for you too. Even if they're not on the first or second or third or even 10th page, they're there for you too. And in case somebody happens to wander upon one of yours by some random search that they do and that you're ranking for, you don't want them to come to a 404 number. That would be such a shame. So we want to make sure that we don't lose that traffic. Plus all of your old social, I had this happen with social posts, sorry, social posts. If you don't do 404s oh, on yeah, your yeah. blog or you don't transfer your blog over, yeah. all of your social media gets 404 would And it is brutal. I, I watched a client do that. She did not take my advice. She did not buy the thing that I told her to buy. She worked with a company that didn't know how to do that properly. Even if you're not going to take all your blog articles over, which I guess I get it, but I don't, I wouldn't suggest it. It's dangerous. You still it's very want that dangerous. traffic. You still want yeah. that traffic. Unbelievable. Well, and, and Anyways. Just to clarify as well, uh, it's a 404 is like, it's just a code you get when you get to a page. And it basically four, 400s are something's broken. 300s are something that's been directed. And then 200s are everything's okay. And so yeah, and 200s. 500s, are, your server's down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 500s are something that's very wrong. And, yes. Uh, you yeah, have to but, call somebody, somebody on your team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, basically, for, well, the way they put it is 400s are you've asked for the wrong page. 500s are yeah. they cannot serve that page. Okay, so, okay. yeah. So it's yeah. depending on who's like who's making the request. It's like, no, you made a bad request. Those 400, 500 is they're uh, they're having some issues and they'll get back to you. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. And so, yeah. yeah. But yeah, just to clarify that part as well. Yeah. And I guess the yeah, it's definitely super important to just set up. um yeah, uh, Google, number one thing, Google hates broken links. That's kind of the yes. biggest thing is that they number hate, one. hate, hate, hate broken links. They don't like pages that aren't working anymore. So uh, what so that means they- is when you decide you don't want something on your website, you cannot just delete it or put it to draft form. You actually have to have a plan of where you're going to take that traffic yeah. to. So it might be a similar page that deals with the similar content, or it might just be your homepage. Um, yeah. Similar content it- always works best. I mean, yeah, it's always better to point it to somewhere that matches what the thing was that's going away. But like homepage is still a viable option, you know, in a pinch. And you just need to, it's better to send it to the homepage than it is to have it broken is basically the way that I would summarize that. Um, But yeah, so I guess we've we've covered all the way up to the migration and getting it live. I guess it is 1130. I guess the last thing just quickly that we to mention is you also want to test all your forms, all your checkouts. Oh, before, yes, yes, yes. Uh, that goes without saying. Yes, after it's yeah. migrated, that's the thing that we do between getting sign off with the client. And I yeah. also suggest that the clients test so that they're sure and they know that we've done it correctly because, yeah, because sometimes things break after you've tested them, they will break. And then I, I don't want to hear about it <laughs> like later, yeah, yeah, six months yeah, later. Exactly. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So yeah, no, I just wanted to make sure that that was clear as well, just because I've done that yeah. where I accidentally had still in testing mode for a checkout. Uh, I managed to catch it before anything went terribly wrong. But oh, it wow, was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, everyone's done it once of like the yeah. form didn't get, wasn't working properly for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, you know, whatever it is, we've all been there. And just the the thing to keep in mind is, yeah, going forward, you just don't want to just uh, test everything before you're launched and ready for the everyone in the world. And test everything always, like just yeah. because, like this software is always updating, right? So if it's always updating, then you always have to test it. Test your pages, check check your sites regularly, check your forms, your booking. I mean, I can't tell you how many people come to me and say, "My form's not working. It hasn't. I haven't gotten an email for six months." I'm like, 
you can't let it go for a whole six months. That's a lot of lost business potentially, right? Yeah. So check yeah. your form. I have I have somebody who checks all of our client forms every month, um, if they're part of our maintenance package. Nice, nice. Yeah, we we usually have it get stored to like a backup to like a, a either a Google Sheet or a database. So if it gets filled oh, yeah, out, maybe yeah. the client doesn't get it. At least we can yeah, go. We hey, 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 hey. Yeah, you, we you have, have that. that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah so. we use Contact 7, I think, is the form that we use. And I actually bought an unlimited license for all of my clients. So they don't really get a choice anymore because I got really tired of having to uh, troubleshoot uh, those those forms and <laughs> fixing them. Yeah. It was just a pain in the butt. So that solved my problem. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, yeah. so I think that covers everything. Uh, all right, what's and... happening next week? Do we know? Do you have it up? Because I forgot to pull it up again. Uh... Oh, is next week the... No, next week is not. No, uh, that is, I'm totally prepared for this. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know I should actually uh, stop asking you because that's totally unfair. It's going to be Pip and Rena talking about insights into marketing. Just, and Pip oh, is goodness. dancing beside okay. me out of frame so you guys can't and, see it, but she was dancing. No, that's like a three hour session, right? Three yeah, hour yeah. session? Yeah, yeah because exactly. Because that's going to be a lot to cover in 30 minutes. And Pip and I are both chatty. On this topic, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I could I could summarize it. You can hear probably... it laughing in the background. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, All right, thanks for joining us. We are in the cyber geek punk cyberpunk geek cyberpunk marketing mixer. Marketing mixer. Oh, <laughs> yes. Are you serious? Cyberpunk marketing mixer Facebook private page. If you're watching this elsewhere, you can always come back to where you are. But if you'd like to join us in the group, please do. We're here every Thursday at 11 to 1130. And we'll see you next week for some more fun. Yeah. Bye for now. The conversation never stops in our Facebook group, Cyberpunk Geeks. Join us at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash cyberpunk geeks to ask your questions, meet new friends, and learn even more about search, social, and websites.